Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. We are doing our second tutorial here on Color Troll. Today we're going to add our touches and our score in there. So now we've got it set up so that whenever we hit the refresh button, it goes randomly across the screen. We have one unique color, one unique word written all over the screen, and it will continue to do that. Uh, one of the nice things um, that the Codia programming has set in, and actually a lot of languages have this set in, and it, what it is is a math.random seed. And let's talk about what that is here for a second. And what this allows us to do is if I put in, let's just say one, and I hit refresh, it's always gonna go to this specific random slot. So now I'm hitting refresh over and over again. It's going to the same one versus where if I put two, two has a different random spot. So what you want is a random, random number. Does that make sense? So you want something to change here all the time because if I put three, hit refresh a few times, it will go to this over and over again. So an easy way that programmers like to do this is just by putting OS time. This is the oper operating system's time and it changes every second where if I hurry up and if I do refresh a few times here, it will go to the same one and you can see it there. I'll hit refresh, it goes to it and then it will eventually change, all right? So at the very, very beginning up there, you wanna add this math.random seed and put an os.time in there as well, okay? And that just puts a random number from the time. And actually, uh, don't put it right there. You wanna put it right here on line 21 so that it's doing it all the time in your draw function, okay? Put that right there on line 21. All right, so if we recall, what we've done here is this is our shuffling of the colors and the words here, lines 22 through 32. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our touched functions um, and what that does is it's all the way down to the bottom. Let me scroll up a little bit here for you. And this is a function that is called in Codia quite often. So if we do function and it's just called touched and obviously it just runs when the iPad is touched. And what we're going to do, what we need to do here is we need to test where you have touched on the screen, whether or not it's here or here in the middle, or top right, bottom right, bottom left and so forth. So we actually have to organize these and what we're going to do is we're going to create a button we're going to create a rectangle or a square around each of these words invisibly that the computer registers and we're going to be able to touch on that particular spot and the computer is going to register that so first with that let's go up top and create an array of this let's do an array of an array this is going to look pretty ugly actually not we'll try to be as organized as possible so let's do this. Let's call a uh, middle, the middle array there. And this is going to be the middle. And I'm going to put a label there. This is going to box the word blue here. So whenever I tap on the word blue, it will pop up with something. And the organization of this is going to be the width 60%, width of 40%, height 40 to height 60. And so this word is centered at a, a W50, H50, right? So we're gonna go 10% over that way, 10% over that way, 10% up and 10% down. So anywhere you touch within that middle there, you're good to go. Let's do the same thing for top right. Top right is, uh, I'm gonna put this here for my label. And then it's at width 80%, so I'm gonna do width 70 and width 90. So that is the low end of the x-axis to the high end of the x-axis. And then we're going to put the low end of the height, which is H80, and the height of the screen, top of it. And then we'll continue to do the top left and so forth. So I'm going to type these in real quick. So pause the video when I'm done here, and then you're gonna type these in as well. All right, so we have all five of these set up. I'm gonna put a little box on the screen right now and show you exactly what these are going to show up as. So the middle, again, is the width of 40% to width of 60, height 40 to 60, top right is 70 to 90, 80 to all the way to the top. This top left one is 10% to 30, and then, uh, oh, bottom left, I'm actually, I was reading. Uh, top left is 10 to 30, 80 to the height, and so forth down there as well. So these are going to register, and it's just it's an easier way to write it in the code. We can use a for loop here in just a bit, um, trying to cycle through each of the touches and see exactly where you have touched the screen. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up an array of all of these different arrays, and we're gonna call it touches. And what this is gonna look like is we're just gonna put in middle, We'll put in top right, top left, bottom left, 
and bottom right. We're gonna line all of those up so then we can register each of these different arrays inside the touches array, all right? So we'll come down here down to the bottom to our touched function now. And now let's cycle through each of our touched areas on the screen. So for example, we will say for i equals one to the number of random words on the screen. We're going to do this. What are we gonna do? We are going to say if our current touch dot x compared to touches of i compared to two. That is the first x coordinate, it's the lower one, and this one will be the greater one, touches, and that is in the third slot, I believe, right? I think that's where we said. I'll zoom out just a little bit so you can see this here. And we'll put an end statement there so that we're not messing up with our ends. And so that does uh, a couple things for us. It searches and tells us whether or not, you know, is this the left X coordinate? And I'll write that in here just as the left X chord. And this one is the right X chord. All right, and what that does is it's checking the lower end to the higher end. It's all through the different five colors on the screen. Now what we're gonna do is the same thing, but with Y. So we'll do current touch dot Y. It needs to be greater than touches at I. And the next one I believe was four and five. And same thing with this one, current touch dot Y has to be less than touches I and five, I believe is the next one, okay? And we will add our next end statement there. And what's going to happen there? We need to set it up so that our answer is set up now. We don't have a way of telling the computer what is the right answer. Right now the right answer is orange, right? Because you look at the middle word and the color of it is actually orange. Now the word spells blue, but that's not the right answer. So you would take the orange and we need to somehow link it to this answer right there. And that is done up in our shuffling area, right up here, okay? And what this is going to do, we are going to now cycle through each of our colors and we are going to find which ones correspond to each other. And let's do that. And this is how we do it right now. Random colors do. And we are gonna say if random colors, if that specific, the first one basically, if that one equals colors I, and then we are going to create a variable called answer, and it's going to be words I. And let me explain what that's going to do. So this is going to cycle through, and it's going to compare it to the first one. Now, random colors one right now is orange, isn't it? Because orange is in the middle slot. And what this is going to do is it's going to cycle through every single one of these colors and test it. So it's going to put a one in there. It's going to say, is red the same as this one? Well, it's not. Well, then it'll cycle through to orange and it'll say, is orange the same as this one? Ding, 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 ding. It is. So then if that's the case, we know it's in the second slot. Well, the second slot up here in the words one is orange. So our answer must be this word right here, orange in quotation marks. All right. Now we have not told the computer what answer is. So up in setup, we have to create it and we have to set it to nil because it doesn't mean anything right now. All right. Now the next thing we have to do is set up answer touch. We want it. We want to create another variable to test it to see if the answer of the computer is the same as the answer where we touched the screen. All right. We need to compare those two as well. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go down to our, the bottom of here and we're going to the touch function and now we're going to test it. Now, let's just say it's going to cycle through each of these and it's going to test the X and Y coordinates with all five of these and it's going to compare it. Now, I'm going to say that the current touch has the state has to be ended. And the reason why we do that is your finger has to be picked up off of the screen. You don't want it when you have began touching the screen. You want it when your finger has been lifted from the screen um, just for ease. So if this is the case, if the finger is touching here or there, 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 and you've picked it up off of the screen, you want your answer touch, you want to answer where you touch to be that random words where you touched the screen. Okay. That is going to be your specific touch. If it is correct, 
Oh, we forgot one thing right here. Um, if it is correct, we can put if our random words, random words here, we want the I, we want this random word to be equal to the answer. Okay? So we're going to test it. So if it's, so we've lifted the finger up off the screen, now we're testing that actual touch where we touched. If that answer for the random words I equals the answer to the actual question or the, the tap here, then we're going to make our answer touch B to that random words I. So now we are comparing the two and we're saying they're equal. Now we're going to increase our score. We want our score to go up by one. Well, have we started off with a score? No, we really haven't. So let's put an end statement here and we are going to put the score, right? Oops, we're going to put the score right there and it's going to be zero. We're going to start off with zero, all right? So we're going to increase our score by one because this is the correct answer touch. So we're going to be okay right there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to now reassign our answer to be nil and our answer touch to be nil as well because you have to start over each time. Does that make sense? You have to actually start over every time you touch and no matter whether you've gotten the right answer or the wrong answer, you want the answer and the answer touch to be refreshed. Otherwise, you come up with the next one and it's still going to register as your answer being the previous try. Does that make sense? All right. So we've got that. Now what we can do is we can come down here and say, well, what if it's wrong? We're going to say else if random words I, this is where you touched. If it does not equal the answer, then what are we going to do? We are going to lose a life. So lives equals lives minus one. Well, we haven't we haven't done this either, have we? So we're going to bring lives. We're going to go up here, and now we're going to add our lives up here. We will do lives of three, all right? And now we'll come back here. What else do we want to do after we've lost a life? Again, we want answer to be nil. We want answer touch to be nil. And we want store to be zero. Now let's remind ourselves what this is. Store zero allows us to come back up top and shuffle right here. This is if store equals zero or doesn't equal one, then it's going to shuffle. That's going to reshuffle the words. Now we want it to shuffle after every time, even when you get a right answer. So we forgot to put that there as well. All right, so we will tab over, put an end there. We have an end, boom, all our ends are lined up. We do not have an end for what we do now. <laughs> Tabbed it over and let's put it right here. Boom, doom, doom, doom. All our ends line up. All our touches are good there. Ready to try it? Let's do this. Let's do one thing so that we can see exactly what's coming up. We will print our score and we will print our lives. All right, so that we can see it every single time through. Print our score, print our lives. Our display mode, let's not do full screen. Let's have the parameters show so that when something happens, we'll be good to go. All right, ready? ready? Let's refresh it here. Okay, cool. All right, so this pops up. Uh, now, our points are zero, our lives are three, and it's going to do that over and over again. Now, if I the middle word is green and it's colored green, so I actually have to tap the middle word. Let's touch it. Boom, I got one point, and look, it refreshed. Now, the middle color is green, so I tap on the word green. Boom, my points are going up. Okay, and the middle word's blue, boom, there it is. And my point continues to go up, red, orange, boom. This is giving me easy ones right now. <laughs> All right, it's yellow, boom, it's continued to go up. Now, let's get one wrong. This one is yellow, so let's tap on that one. Now, my lives went down, my lives went down again, my lives went down to zero, and boom, and it will continue to go down to negative one because we haven't actually set anything up for lives. So what I'd recommend for you, there's so many different things you can do here. When you tap on the right word, you could have the screen flash green, which is how I have mine programmed. You can set up the lives on the top of the screen. I'll let you do that. You're familiar with putting text on the screen. You're familiar uh, with doing if then statements. Start trying it out on your own. If your lives are less than zero, what do you want it to do? Make it game over, have a game over state running through your game. Something, uh, you could have an intro screen, a, a title screen where you're going into the game as well. There's a lot of different things you can do that we've looked at in the past that you're able to do now. These are the basics of running the colors through there, randomly picking it, shuffling it, touching it, and setting up the score. So that's pretty much it for our Color Troll game. Thanks for joining us and uh, good luck in your endeavors.